Welcome to another edition of Tiny Talks. Uh, tonight, we have a question for you. Are you voting? That's our question for tonight. Yeah. We've got a friend with me. I'm going to allow her to introduce herself to you all. Hello, hello. To answer your question, yes, I voted. Yes. The Brutons are good to go. Uh, my name is Nina Bruton, and I am yeah. excited to be here uh, back for Tiny Talks. Yeah. So, I guess you can guess by now. We're talking about voting. You know, mm -hmm. we're in the... Uh, Heavy electoral season. Yes. Uh, uh, year of voting. A lot of things happening this year. 2020. What a year. <laughs> what a year. 2020. <laughs> all right. So, we're going to talk about voting tonight. All mm -hmm. right. All right. So, why does voting matter to you? Ooh. I know that's a loaded question, but why does voting matter to you? Voting matters to me. <laughs> no. <laughs> But honestly, it it really is an important thing to me, and and I've really been. We were talking before how you know I've really been kind of taking a look at my personal responsibility, yeah. um, in my community, uh, in in my state, and in the nation as as mm -hmm. a whole. Um, and so voting for me is important because I I know that um, my voice does in fact have power. Yeah. That my vote has power. That my my. Um, the ways that I seek to shift uh, our society, um, my views matter. And I know that in by voting from my local election on up to the presidential election, that it all makes makes a huge difference. Yeah. yeah. I think people, we've taken our vote for granted. Mm -hmm. um, just people in general, yeah. uh, human society, but especially people of color, we've taken our actual right and our ability to vote for granted, mm -hmm. um, because people may not know, but everybody wasn't always allowed to vote here in what? America. No. Everybody couldn't vote. Yeah. I mean, at one point, women couldn't vote. Right. Black people couldn't vote. Mm -hmm. Right. Black women couldn't vote. It yeah. was really a thing relegated to white men. Yeah. 18 or older. Yeah. Well, actually, 21, actually. Absolutely. Like, everybody couldn't vote. Um and even like you say, even with the, sorry to cut you off, yeah. but even like you said, white men, generally property owners even, right. but you, so there were even layers right. within that, yeah. right, about who was allowed to vote. Um, but then women did get the right to vote, but if you were black, that right. didn't always, that's another hurdle, right? yeah, that's just another hurdle. So now black men can't vote, black women maybe. Yeah. And even still, there was a lot of um, a lot of oppression as far as that was concerned. Right. That vote was concerned. Yeah. So, so yeah. okay. So you brought up a good word, oppression. Uh, mm -hmm. We can talk about we talk about voting. Mm -hmm. um, big high topic is voter suppression. Yes. Um, let's give the people some uh, our views on voter voter suppression. Of course, mm -hmm. we don't like it, but some some things that uh, contribute to voter yeah. suppression. What it looks like okay. in some of our cities. Mm -hmm. um, Early on, we had things like poll taxes mm -hmm. that were um, done, but the Fifteenth Amendment, of course, you know, got away with that. Um, and poll taxes were basically, in order to vote, you had to have a certain income. Yeah. And of course, you know that um, that wasn't good for a lot of minority people mm -hmm. because they didn't weren't able to have jobs because of their skin color. Mm -hmm. So of course, you don't have a job, you don't make enough money to pay the poll tax to right. be considered for the poll tax, so you can't vote. Mm -hmm. um, but things like poll taxes. Um, Things we had like literacy, uh, literacy tests. Mm -hmm. You had to be able to read certain things. Yeah. Um, those things. And even even once you could get past that, there were other factors of intimidation. Yeah. I mean, people would meet at the polls and dare you to vote. Or if they found out you were voting, they would do things to your house or to yeah. your family. So you had a lot of people fighting for that. So let's let's give the people some other, maybe even some modern yeah. um, e examples of voter suppression that mm -hmm. you may have seen or know about. Well, and I know that one thing that continuously comes up, especially because 2020 is all things 2020. Yeah. Uh, we, we talk about the ways that COVID has impacted the workforce, okay. the various workforces, that including um, uh, the United States Postal Service. So there's a lot of talk around mail-in ballots mm -hmm. and where those drop boxes are, right? right? And uh, whether they've been removed, you know, we've heard a number of excuses or reasons for right. why various um, polling stations have been closed. Mm -hmm. um, we've heard that 
that pre different precincts have been closed altogether. And this is in communities with thousands and thousands of people, be it by county or even by city, mm -hmm. that we've seen that these shifts have been made to make it more difficult. And this is why we're seeing lines, a lot of lines mm -hmm. where it comes to people voting, because now all of these, you know, the people from precinct A and, you know, and B now have to go over to C, right? right? And one thing that really stands out to me is in cities like Atlanta, for okay. example, yeah. Um, a lot of the people who um, make up the you know a, a large amount of voters, the the workforce, mm -hmm. right? These are African Americans, yep. primarily other uh, people of color. <clears throat> excuse me, who live outside of the city? Right. They live on the uh, you know where the MARTA runs all the way around mm -hmm. the city, and so they can't get to right. their the vote, polling their station. polling right. station right. because they have jobs that they can't get away from. Right. You know, they work multiple jobs that they can't. They have children that they right. have to go get. So there are so many layers to where we are within our communities yes. that uh, that allow and bring the uh, the the problem of voter suppression to various communities. Yeah. And yeah. put in, like, I know a one form of voter suppression that I've been hearing about is um, every state hasn't given, hasn't allowed for the COVID 19 mm. to be a, a reason why you want to vote early or, right. or absentee, which is like for the things that you talked about, people who have working jobs, mm -hmm. they need to be able to early vote right. or mail in their ballot because, like you said, they have to go to work. Mm -hmm. But those restrictions are there that aren't allowing people to do that. As well, um, other things that we've seen are um, what well, you were talking about the voting, the voting places. Um, I think that's a, one of the great things that the NBA did this year. A lot of the players yes. were trying to use their major cities arenas mm -hmm. to make those places polling stations. Of course, it's bigger places, more people can fit into them. Yeah. And so I think those that's a great way of people using their voice, mm -hmm. trying to uh, resist this voter suppression type thing. Um, you have stuff like. Um, no, I guess no early voting, um, making it harder for people to register to vote. Yeah. Um, having the proper IDs, mm -hmm. um, voter places closing earlier than they're supposed to close. Yeah. Um, like you said, the thing with the with the post office, mm -hmm. um, they're taking away ballot boxes and even having intimidation at um, certain polling stations, yes. uh, taking away the paper ballots. I mean, it's a lot of stuff that's going on with mm -hmm. that voter suppression stuff. So, right. And yeah. this is, and this is one thing. So we talk about all the ways that, uh, you know, that our ancestors and our, and our forefathers have worked right. to uh, provide the opportunity for us all to be able to vote. And this yeah. is why, <clears throat> Excuse me, and this is why it's so important. The the fact that it always gets brought up that if if your vote didn't matter, right. then we wouldn't see so many people and so many different um, <clears throat> excuse me, so many different people trying to keep us from making a vote, and not just keep us from voting, but keeping us from uh, a lot of people get jaded and discouraged. Right, and I think that's where a lot of young people are. I think mm -hmm. that's where a lot of shoot older people who yeah. have been voting, yeah. you know, people 40 and up who we've been voting and it seems as if it's, 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 we're spinning our wheels, right? We're spinning our wheels. And now here we are stuck in this two party system right? and we don't really feel as if we're getting anything done. So, uh, you know, I, what do you have to say for the people who might be discouraged and right. might think that I, my voice doesn't matter. Why should I even try? That's a, that's a great question you bring up. Cause I was going to bring up also, we make, our voting. No, mm -hmm. Normally, we only talk about voting during the presidential election. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We make it just about the presidential mm -hmm. election. But as we're talking, there's so much to our vote, and we vote on so many other things mm -hmm. and so many other times. Yeah. Um, I know, like, my, my dad, we've talked before how my dad was a president in NAACP, March of Dr. King, and voting registration was a big thing for him. Mm -hmm. And he, like, forced upon me, I don't care if they voting about changing the color of the trash cans. Yeah. We're going to vote. Because those things, especially at the local level, yes. affect the other things. Mm -hmm. um, so let's let's talk about that a little bit. Why voting is important, not just in the presidential, in the years of electing a president, but even in the smaller local elections. Right. So how how that plays a part in this whole electoral process? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that where people, where we fail and we get lazy, we get complacent mm -hmm. because a lot of times we do find ourselves as the average citizen uh, feeling overwhelmed, yeah. overwhelmed with the options that we have, overwhelmed with all the information, with the ads, with the, you know, the right. different people 
who and we don't know who to trust. Uh-huh. And so instead of digging in right. and you know going online and, and finding sample right. ballots and going online and really, <clears throat> excuse me, determining who, um, you know, taking a look at the different candidates on right. both sides, yeah. right? Because it's not a we got to get over the this you know, am I a Republican or am I a Democrat? No. Who is really from the local level on up? Okay. Let's start. Like you said, start at the local level. There are people for running for city council who generate change in your community, in our direct communities. These are the things that directly impact us almost immediately. Right. Right. Whereas again, the things from the, from the very top, take time to trickle down and shift and so on and so forth. So from our city officials Uh to uh, the individuals, we got, we have to come to learn about the individuals who we send to, to Washington, who we send to Richmond, who represent us. Because by the time we get to, excuse me, by the time we get on up to president, we ought to already have people kind of in place Mm -hmm. that are speaking for us and that we trust to speak for us when it comes to, the presidential election. Right. But again, so many of us get discouraged and p- paralyzed, I think, from yeah. all of the rhetoric right. that people just shut down altogether and right. just throw their hands up and say, right. forget about it. And, and so, so on the local level, okay, we, we talk about um, things that are going on in our society now and defunding the police mm-hmm. and police brutality is mm-hmm. a big thing. Mm-hmm. But people don't, again, this is all about voting still. People don't understand that uh, voting for your mayor and your city mm-hmm. manager, and those are the people who who appoint the the chief of police. Yeah. So yeah. if we so if you want to talk about resisting police brutality mm-hmm. and suppression on that end, you've got to vote locally. Yeah. Because those people make the decisions on who your police chief is going to be, and how your police chief is. That's how your police department is going to mm-hmm. be run. Mm-hmm. But if you only if you're only focusing on the presidential election, right. you let all of this other stuff fall through the cracks Mm -hmm. and we having all these protests and marching yeah but we march on the street but we don't march to the polls yeah yeah to actually vote and make our voice be heard Mm -hmm. so on the local level why help the people explain why voting locally Mm -hmm. is so it affects like you say it goes up the chain Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like why that's so important yeah of that and not just focusing on the presidential election. Right. Well, what I'm learning, and this is this is an, a season, I found myself in a season where I've had to step back and really take a look at what all I don't know. Yeah. Right? Yeah, or all here. or all that I've forgotten. Right. Because there's a lot we've we've all learned things in civics class in high right. school and you know, we but we somewhere along the line we just kind of Right. It's like it's not important. Right. right. It's not important. It doesn't mm-hmm. pertain to me. Oh, but it does. Right. right. So when you even look at like you said, even look at the way most cities Cities are run uh-huh. from what I'm learning, right? We often look at the mayor <coughs> yeah. as the person who's running our cities. Right. Well, no, the city council, the city manager, and the city council are generally who runs our run cities. The city. They are the ones who allocate funds. Right. Like you said, they're the ones who appoint police chiefs and things right. like that, and the people who would make those decisions that could, you know, right. uh, uh, uh eliminate right. the police brutality that we're seeking to eliminate mm-hmm. or that could bring about the social change right. within our police departments that could, you know, better serve our communities to help better serve our communities. So I think what people need to do is really when you see, this is an example. I just recently spoke with uh, councilman Aaron Rouse from uh-huh. Virginia beach. Uh-huh. And one of the things that he, uh, he offered a suggestion and I've heard it once before as well is that when you have people that groups in on Facebook, yeah. like I don't have to know everything, mm-hmm. right? But if we get friends together, okay, you take these two candidates, you take these two candidates, and then we'll go and find uh, the information that we need to find, what their platform is, what their, right? This is a way that collectively we can get the people together and we say, okay, what'd you learn about that individual? Okay, what'd you learn okay. about? And we could share information in that way. So right. that way it doesn't feel like I'm taking just on. just so overwhelmed. I'm so overwhelmed trying to take on all of this responsibility and read through everything myself right? right get with people that you trust mm-hmm. and we and, and 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 we find we find the the people who we want and and now this is the thing in those groups we don't all have to agree the right. idea is to get the information right. that we need so right. that we exactly. go into the polls with knowledge educated, right. and educated right. because just going in and, and I've been guilty. Oh, yeah, we I've been have. guilty, right. especially my husband and I were in Hampton for right. years and we've been in Chesapeake for five years. And I can right. honestly say that I don't recognize the people well, on yeah. the signs in Chesapeake. Yeah. We're still kind of Hampton minded, right? Because right? yeah, yeah. we've been 
there for so long. So it is our responsibility. We, we want to talk about, you know, President Obama didn't do X, Y, and Z for right. the black community. Right. But what are you doing for your, like, right. it begins at the what local level. Doing? Right. And we can't expect him to do, or anyone else to right. do anything in Washington if we're not willing to do it in Hampton, yes. in Chesapeake, in, you know, wherever right. we may be. So as we're talking about this local level, <laughs> let's talk about something that's very important that people often overlook. And even I've been guilty of overlooking in the years past. Let's talk about the importance of the census. Mm. Why is the census so important? Why is it such a thing? People don't know it's a thing, yeah. but why is it such a thing? Most people, when the people come around well, before COVID, they would come yeah. to your house and say, hey, have you signed up for the census? And you would see them coming and you wouldn't open the door. Yeah. You know, it's like, no, nah, yeah. I don't want to deal with it. So <laughs> what what is it about the census that people are so eerie about? Or why, why are we not... Uh, aware of what the census is. Again, I think it's just one of those things that is ignorance. We're, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're af afraid or we try to ignore what we're ignorant about. I right. think that people are afraid of not knowing. Right. And so instead of saying, I don't know why yeah. we have the census or why, they, first of all, if anyone, if a census worker is coming to your door, it's because right. you're late turning in your census. Right. Like that's the final, you right. know, that's the final step. You could have been sent it in right. or now done it online. So if someone's actually knocking on your door, it's because you didn't take the time to fill it out, right. which happens. It gets lost in the sauce. I get it. But when it comes to the census, this is where they, the, the, the state, the federal government attempts to get an idea of how many children, how many people over a certain age, how many working people right. are in, in our communities so that we can have a better idea of how to allocate funds, how to how, allocate what, funds. what roads need to be built, what schools need to be uh, established at each level. You know, right. if there needs to be, do we need to put our money toward a new elementary school or do we have more high schoolers now? Right. Right. Do our high schools need more? So these are the things that people don't, it's not just a matter of them having a head count. Right. Right. There's work that needs to be done more based on it. who is present in our country. Yes. And we don't know that unless we complete the census. Right. So the <laughs> census affects, it it's, it's counts population, but mm -hmm. that affects how funds are yes. allocated. So many people, again, march in the streets and have so many protests and so much resistance towards mm -hmm. Uh, properly being funded in education, mm -hmm. um, schools having housing, all of that stuff. Yeah. But all of that is predicated upon the census. Mm -hmm. And when you don't fill out the census, it says to the government, this is the only amount of people that are here in this section. So yeah. they don't need all of that. But in actuality, they need a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. on paper, yeah. it says you don't have this. So the census affects education. Yeah. It affects uh, what housing. Mm-hmm. All of those things. Yep, our and, infrastructure, yeah. all of that plays a part in the the outcome of the census. And, the, and it also affects um, the census helps helps affect uh, the electoral college votes that yes. we get for the presidential election. Mm -hmm. So, just a brief, even in the presidential <laughs> presidential election, the, a person can win the popular vote. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that they win the office of president. Yeah. Expound on that for for a moment, if you can. Oh yeah, yeah. I wish I had more on the electoral college. Honestly, right, right. Got you um, no. So my understanding, again, uh -huh. what I recall from high school. Okay, no. My understanding is that the electoral college, and and from what I can tell, they need to, we just need to run with the popular vote and let that be it. Because when people hear about the electoral college and the fact that the idea is that per capita, per capita, right, you, your state representatives get right. a number, a particular number of votes right. based on the amount of, 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 of the population in their district or in their area. Okay. From there, this is where people, it gets a little shaky okay. because when it comes down to it, that person can technically go vote however they want, right. right? The idea is that they are speaking for the, for pe the people, for the popular right. vote. And this is where um, people say, well, my vote doesn't matter. Why right. should I even try if this person ultimately can go and kind of do whatever they want with my vote, right? right? And so there's, a, there's an ongoing debate about whether the electoral college is even still necessary mm -hmm. or, or whether it's not. And, and this is the thing that I'd like, to, the point that I'd like to make about that is that 
we have systems. It's going back to the, the, the learning and the relearning that I'm having to do even personally is that there are systems that are in place in our, in our society yeah. that we don't know about. Right. And so it's difficult to learn how to make the systems work for us if we don't really have a, even a baseline understanding of how they, of how they are run and how they, how the machine works. Right. Yeah. So our, our vote is vi that voice of voting affects so many things other than just the presidential election. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I think a main focus of our conversation is tonight is yeah. about the importance of using your voice mm -hmm. to vote. And especially in the census, because even with those electoral votes, they are given according to the census. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, because each state uh, gets two votes for its two senators that they get, and mm -hmm. one vote for its representatives, mm -hmm. re representatives mm -hmm. in Congress. Mm -hmm. But if and that's all done by the district, the, right. how they draw the districts and all of that, yeah. which is a whole other thing <laughs> yeah. of how that's done. Mm -hmm. um, but that's all that's important, and people don't understand that. Yeah. They just think, all mm -hmm. I need to do is vote for the president, and that's going to be it. Yeah. But it's, it's more to it than that. Mm -hmm. So let's talk more about, about the things that have, um, I guess, uh, prohibited a lot of people from voting. Mm -hmm. As a woman, and we talked, we hit on it a little earlier in, mm -hmm. in the beginning of how voting was really... Um, originally just designed for white men above the age of 21 to vote. Mm -hmm. um, women have played a major part in in voting in America, mm -hmm. especially in our last few elections. Oh, women, yeah. um, especially through. women of color have been the deciding, kind of deciding factor. We trying. So, so talk more, of, can, can you give the people <laughs> just some insight on um, some women who have paved the way with women's suffrage and just uh, being a being a voice, <clears throat> a voice for women voting and using their having their voice be heard. Oh my word, names! Ay ay ay! I mean, you got Ida B. Wells, um, you got Fannie Lou Hamer. Yeah, absolutely. Like all, 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 all of them. But talk <clears throat> talk about the importance of women mm -hmm. voting and how just the, the importance of that. Well, and I'm sorry, I'm not good at, at dropping names. That's fine. <laughs> um, but no. <clears throat> Excuse me. One thing that I know we've seen, and as a woman, oh, you know, I, I tease people all the time and, and say that, you know, Beyonce was really onto something when she said, that, who runs the world? Like, right. Girls? Like, no, really. Yeah. Women. <laughs> we've been running. Even if it's just the ways we influence men, mm -hmm. <laughs> the okay. power that we have even in influencing the men in our lives. Uh -huh. Right. Women are running the world. So once we did, and, and I think that there were a lot, like you said, Fannie Lou Hammer, Hammer and uh, Shirley Chisholm and the yes. different women who uh, who fought to, <clears throat> excuse me, provide a platform for women's voices, for the voices of women. Um, you know, they saw then that we were the ones that would really bring about the change, you know, right. and I and I think even beyond just the the political aspect of it, women have a way of um, one we're, we're you know, we we hear a lot of times that men are the ones who are solution oriented, yeah. uh -huh. but we have uh, women have the ability one to look at the greater good. Right. right. And I think that we're able to, with our emotional selves, with our nurturing hearts, we are able to look at the country as a whole and say, okay, this isn't just a business proposition. Like there are people, there right. are children, right. there are people. And I think that a lot of the, uh, the women who paved the way for, for everyone to be able to vote, yeah. to finally be able to vote, recognize that if women vote, particularly now if black women vote right. then or, and have the, the right to vote, then everyone else can win from there, right. right? And I think that's where the idea of even going back to Black Lives Matter, the idea that if we if we can win, if right. we can get some some leverage here, yeah, yeah. then everyone else will benefit. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. And that's how it is with women. If we, if we are, if our voices are heard, if our perspective is given, if our platform, if you will, or the things that we are standing up for are, are met and are uh, realized, then everyone else can win as well. Like there's a way for that to happen. Right. Yeah. If that makes and sense. And even with women voting, because representation matters. Yeah. Um, when you have a, Females voting there, that representation of the female, not necessarily a gender, mm -hmm. but just mindset, it goes into creating a place of of equality yeah. across the field. I mean, you brought up, I mean, black women voting. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can look back even in 2018, uh, how black women carried that yeah. vote in, in Alabama with mm -hmm. the senator. Like, they carried the state. Yeah. 
Like that's how important that is. It's not like they just you know um, were able to be a little drop in the bucket, mm-hmm. but it car- it made a world of difference yeah. in 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 that state. And it's so important that people understand that, that representation matters, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to women. And this is going to move me to my next point. Uh, let's talk about voters who are currently in this season. So we know we have, unfortunately in America, we have only two sides yeah. to pick from. Mm-hmm. It's either this side or this side. Mm-hmm. And with that, people often become one single issue voters. Um, as long as this candidate is about this topic, mm-hmm. they going to have my vote. No matter how it affects other things, yeah. no matter their character, mm-hmm. no matter their lack of immorality, none of that matters. As long as it's, they are for this one issue, yeah. then they're, they're going to have my vote. Mm-hmm. Um, talk about the importance of not being a Ooh. one issue voter, if you can. One, there's there's... It's a. It's funny because normally the one issue is something that impacts women the most. <laughs> mm. Mm. So the irony, the irony that that is that this is the case yeah. that most people, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a mm. matter of uh, again, it goes back to if women <laughs> yeah. are upheld and our rights are upheld, then really everyone else kind of wins as well. Now, as far as as voting. It being a, a, a one topic voter, a one yeah, a one, one issue, issue mm-hmm. voter, we are not we. There's not one issue that I am. I am not. There are many things that make me a black woman, right? right in America, in America, mm-hmm. there are many things that impact my life every single day. Right. This one topic, I may never be. I, it may never impact my life directly. Right. Right. This one, or even these two particular topics that people may be voting for. Right. Mm-hmm. It may not impact, but my being black. Right. The right. the policies that impact me as a as a black mm-hmm. woman, mm-hmm. I experience that every day. And so where the problem arises is that when people get their their sights set on this one, one thing, issue, right. you're eliminating and uh, and ignoring. All of the other things that impact who people are, their whole person, their, yeah. them holistically. And this is why we got to get away from, while we do have the two-party system, we have to get away from the one-issue vote. Right. Because, again, my life and the lives of everyone that I, in this room right now, and everyone that I come into t- contact with on a regular basis, their lives are way more than just one, one issue. One issue, right. Of course. And so... To, I cannot with a, and this is where voting de- all the way down one side or even down another side mm-hmm. is never, is never good. Right. As a believer, mm-hmm. if Jesus is really at the center of right. it all, then I need to be somewhere in the center with Jesus. Right. Yeah. Okay. Me leaning to the, to the left or to the right. I need to be somewhere right. closer to the center with Jesus. Right. right? And that character. And if the individual and even do you, and you're still dealing with humans. Right. Right. But I think Angela Davis, while we're talking about, you know, women who have paved the way, uh, Angela Davis is someone who over the years and she's a, a she's an, a, she's for abolishing prison, the prisons and like right. all together. Uh, bless her heart. And but one of the things that um, that she said that's so powerful to me is that I need I need someone. I'm looking at someone who gives the most space for me to work with mm-hmm. the candidate okay. that that is leaving the most space the, the most who has the most flexibility right. or who I think has the most flexibility and gives the most grace in order for our, us as a nation to move forward. Yeah. And I think so it can't be one at, at this point, at this point, right. the policies like I'm, we're just trying to get out of this rut right, right now. Right? right. How can we just get over this hump? Right. And then from there we can, we can have the space yeah, to, sure. to be able to adjust and, and, and make the changes that are needed to really, really, push the country forward as a whole. Yeah, and with the one issue voting, I think we're all going to have preferences. Yeah. There are going to be certain things that we lean in more to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think what where we get into a problem is when we hang our hat mm-hmm. on one issue. Yeah. And when we hang our hat on that one issue, we tend to ignore, yeah. like you said, all the other things mm-hmm. that are in other people that are affected, especially people on the margins. Yeah. And as believers, we definitely get in an issue when we make that one voting issue Mm -hmm. the gospel yeah um because believe it or not um there is no democratic system in the kingdom no 
I know that's not what we're here for, but, but it's true. There, it's, <laughs> it's not. So for people to make mm-hmm. a certain particular issue or a particular party, right? Uh, the Bible. Christian party, yeah. mm-hmm. that's a misrepresentation of Jesus. Absolutely. Because Jesus, I mean, even in the Bible, they asked him, well, whose side are you on? And he says, no, I'm not. Like, what do you mean? Like, I'm not I'm on neither side. Right. I'm like, about the kingdom. I, I am the side. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's yeah. me. I am the side. You're yeah. not going to make me pick one side or the yeah. other. No, yeah. I am the way. Like, it's me. Mm-hmm. So there is no, 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 no democratic system right. in the kingdom. But in America, yeah. we've made it as if one side is more Christian than yeah. the other. And if you call yourself a Christian, yeah. and if you don't vote for that side, then yeah. you're not really a real... 100% Christian because you're not voting for the Christian party. Right. But that's, God is, he, I'm not on either side. And if we really yeah. <laughs> wanted to get into all of that, right? you know, you look at the way, the, 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 that the way parties, and well, the way the American government, if we want to talk about America specifically, right. the way the American government was established yeah. as a Christian nation, as a Christian, mm-hmm. you know, with these Christian standards, but we know that it was also very much racist. Right, very much. Very, you know, these same individuals owned humans, right, right. you know? And so we have to, and this is where people want to talk about what well, I didn't own and what well, I didn't. Yeah, right. but we have to look at the history. Right, the history. And the the history that it and creates. The, right. Is that in the systems created. that, it, that right. it created? And so from there, we look at the church's impact right. on government. Yes, now we have the separation between, you know, church, church and state. state. Mm-hmm. But when it comes down to it, we have to look at how the Christian, how our our, our systems were right. established by the church, right. the 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 American church mm-hmm. as we know it, and where that has us now. Yes. Right. And then the unlearning that has to happen for some individuals right. to really grab a hold of that. Yeah. And then again, what now needs to happen to be able to move beyond the two party system that we recognize, right. right? My husband made a really good point just today in conversation that, you know, we were so worried about, uh, the, the different parties, but th- we're thinking about this is, this is the world system, right? It's yeah. not the kingdom. Right. It's, it's not world. kingdom. This isn't kingdom business here. Right. So when people talk about, well, he's got, you know, this is God's, God's appointed, uh-huh. God's appointed. No, no. We want to talk about free will everywhere else, right? Except, except for when, when we go to vote, right? No, you did this, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. Based on your perceptions, based on your ideas, based on how you were raised, mm-hmm. I'm not hating that. But if you, you know, were raised, we got to look at our family's history, right? To see where, because a lot of black people vote Democrat because our parents have always, you know, right? It's 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 we. We don't take the personal responsibility again of getting to know the system and the processes ourselves, and then knowing what to do with that information moving forward. Yes, it, it, it's interesting that you brought it up because that's where I was going next. We think that w- when it comes to voting, once we cast our ballot, mm-hmm. once we check the box, put it in the machine, my work is done. Mm-hmm. Cool, I'm good. I'm I'm done. Let's talk about how the uh, I don't want to say the lifestyle of, of voting, but mm-hmm. how we have to be more civically engaged yes. as people Yes. besides that one day in November mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. in May, whatever right. we vote. How, um, mm-hmm. after we cast our ballot, what things that we need to do to hold our city officials mm-hmm. accountable. I think that's, that's a part of the a big issue that we have in America is that we vote for a person who says... I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that mm-hmm, and that. Mm-hmm. And we just take their word for it. Yep. And then when they don't do it, yeah. we don't challenge them. Or when they do something directly opposite, we don't challenge right. them and hold them accountable. Mm-hmm. That's a part of our civic duty. Yeah. It's more than just registering for the census. Mm-hmm. It's more than just uh, registering to vote. It's more than just going to vote mm-hmm. and doing that and being knowledgeable of why we're voting, who we're voting for. But even after that happens... Yeah holding them accountable. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. would never, um, like, if, if given the analogy of having a child, we would never birth a child and they'd be like, oh, my job is done. I'm good. You out. Right. No, I have to hold you accountable for your actions yeah. and mm-hmm. I'm rearing and raising you. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. let's talk about ways that people can stay civically engaged mm. after yes. they vote. That's exciting. What things can they do to remain engaged 
after they cast their yeah. ballot? Well, one of the easiest ways that you can do this is one, the internet is at our fingertips. Yeah. All <laughs> right. We have all the information. I think, I think one problem that we have is a lot of people don't know what questions to ask. Okay. Okay. It's kind of like when we go to the doctor, a lot of times we just, we just kind of take, uh, you know, the doctor's prognosis it, right. and, and then, then go we, for it. right. It. But even if any smart person would say, okay, I've gotten this diagnosis. Well, let me go and, and read up about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Learn what this cancer is. Learn what type, you know, what the treatments are. Learn. And people will dive in. Right. So either, either they'll totally close their eyes to it and just go get whatever the doctor says, or they'll dig in and say, okay, right. let me go learn more about this thing that has impacted me directly. Mm -hmm. So with that, I think that we have to be, again, let me back up. One thing that I've really tried to do is look at my city, and I'm challenging people to do this in my day-to-day -day conversations, is saying, what do I want my city to look like? Mm -hmm. What do I want my state to look like? How do I want it to run? What expectations do I have, right? right? And this can be something as simple as, as carrying a little book that, with you and just jotting down questions that you know right. I have. So then from here... There are city council meetings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are civic league meetings. Right. These are little things that, um, it, if I can be quite frank, I've heard people be like, man, that's some white folks stuff. Right. Well, right. what do you mean? We've, and again, it's something that we've, for so long, mm. so many of our parents and, and even maybe grandparents have been discouraged along the way that they don't even participate. They don't even know where the civic meetings are, you know, civic right. league meetings. But this, this is where... I can take my ideas and mm -hmm. the and the things that I feel that I want to have happen in my community and go in and find ways to make them happen right. and talk to the people right and really build myself within the community that I say I'm a part of and begin to build the community I say I want to to have yes. and to live in. <coughs> um, I think that um, you know one of the other things that we can do is make sure that uh, we have. This is something really simple, and and it's and I've actually kind of been having an idea. This has kind of been jogging my brain around this very thing. If you have a candidate or a congressperson, someone that you, there are templates that you can find online that can help guide your language because not everyone mm -hmm. has the language, right? To say no, no, you, congressman, whoever you said X, Y, and Z. Right. Right. And so, but this is what you've done. Right. And right. So, and holding the people yep. accountable. We talk a good game about why well, my tax dollars pay there. Well, yeah, but you don't know what to make them do. You don't right. even know what to, what questions to ask. Hmm. And that goes back to what I was saying about the doctor. A lot of times people, because we're so af afraid of seeming ignorant. Yeah. Or, 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 you know, dumb <laughs> about a thing. I'll just go and say this dumb, even beyond ignorant, that we seem, we feel clueless that we'll go and just be quiet in, in our little, you know, in, in, in our little corner instead of saying, you know, finding ways to gain the information that you need. And again, this takes partnering with other people. Right. To find out how can I, there are people all up and down my Facebook timeline who are directly involved mm -hmm. in, for example, in different politics. And if I have a question, I know the different individuals right. I can go to who would give me a sound answer right. of what I can do. Who can I write? Do I make a phone call? Can I make an email to right. congressmen, how such and such? Like, right. how do I go about doing this? The information is there. We just got to know what it is that we want. Right. And then from there, learning what questions to ask and then how to go about uh, giving the information, the feedback that we, we need to give after we've uh, determined what questions we have or what, what standard that we're wanting people yeah. to live up to. So it's very important for us to know who our city officials is, yes. who our city officials are, mm -hmm. um, who they are. We need to know who our mayor is. Yes. Of course, you know, that's kind of like a flagship, but we need to know who that is. But mm -hmm. we need to know who the city manager is. We yeah. need to know who... The Commonwealth Attorney is. Yes. We need to know who runs this city council. Mm -hmm. um, things at the local level um, that you can get accustomed to to help you understand and learn more of the national level mm -hmm. of voting. You need mm -hmm. to know who your police chief is. Yeah. Um, you need to know um, who, like, well, I said the city manager. 
You need to know those types of people. You need to know who your representatives are. And we vote for the sheriffs. Many, many right. places vote those for sheriff, sheriff as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we don't, those are things that we, and we don't, my husband just recently, and I keep going this way, y'all, because he's over there. So, uh, <laughs> I keep, uh, I just recently learned the difference between, I can't think of it right now, of course, but the difference between what the sheriff's department does yes. right. and what the, the police department does. Right. Like, there's a difference right. there. And again, he told me, but I'll be remembering right. all the time. Yeah, so, yeah. There's a difference. Most of your, <laughs> your, your sheriffs, they serve the warrants and right. do all right, that. Right, they right. Evictions and things uh, of yeah, that they, nature. They do a lot of the, uh, the they, I call it protecting the court, but normally your bailiff, those people, they, mm-hmm. they you know, do those things in the courthouse. Right. Courthouse right, security, that. stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it's not necessarily a regular, and what we say a regular policeman is. Yeah. You know, they two different things. But it's important for you to know those types mm-hmm. of things. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's, let's move to two more things, and then, we, and then we'll, we'll be done. What is the let's talk to uh, a younger the younger generation and how important <laughs> their vote and I'm saying there as yeah. if as if we senior citizens but we like how, how important <laughs> their vote is um, just thinking about Martin Luther King and uh, John Lewis yeah. and how in the '60s how they were spearheading the civil rights movement mm-hmm. these men were not 50 and 60 year not. old yeah a lot of the sit-ins that happened a mm-hmm. lot of the Freedom Riders, all of that stuff. These were college students, yeah. so it it just goes to show us the importance of young people being knowledgeable, yes, and and voting. Mm-hmm. So let's talk to some young people who may watch this and encourage them for reasons why they should vote. Yes, yes. Why yes. why their voice matters? Your voice matters because of all the things we just said. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, but no. The fact of the matter is what we are dealing with right now is a product of mm-hmm. our parents mm-hmm. votes right. and our, you know, I'm generation X. I think you're just into the millennials, mm-hmm. yep. right? A, a senior it. millennial. Right. I've heard it called recently. Right. Um, and, and we are the products of what, what happens now impacts our future. Mm-hmm. And so, like you said, we think about Dr. King and John Lewis and Rosa Parks and all these people as if they won, they've always showed us pictures in black and white. Right. So it seems like, like it was so, just so, so, so long, long ago. ago. Right. Okay. But these were young people who recognized the responsibility that they had. Now, I've been talking to a lot of young people, late teens, early 20s, about the the impact that they can have in their communities because immediately when things start happening, they want to go, they want to hit the streets, right? right? They want to hit, they want to protest. They want to use their energy. But, but I'm running into a few of them who do understand the Mm -hmm. importance and are learning to, uh, to to really lean into the importance of a vote and their voice and strategizing Mm -hmm. and finding their place within the revolution, if you will. Right. Because the fact of the matter Mm -hmm. is America, when it really comes down, to it is a really young country. Yeah. We're extremely young, right? We're only 200 and something yeah. years old, yeah. right? Um, and so um, there is an America that can be within your lifetime. I don't know which camera to even look at, but young people, honestly, there's an America that can come to be in your lifetime based on what you do now at 19, at 20, right. you know, at, in voting right now. And the things that you learn about about the systems now, you we can create a whole new system in your lifetime, mm-hmm. I think. It's something that's not unrealistic. Yeah. You know, we talk about the, we're, we're tired of the two party system, but again, like, like Dr. Davis said, having that, the space to, in the, to, to work with candidates and people right. who represent you, who are willing to be flexible to the needs of all people, right. you know, but you remaining silent or writing in your favorite celebrity or, you know, <laughs> something like along those lines isn't strategic. It's not bringing about strategic change. transformational yeah. change. Yeah. And that's what we have to really get to, right? right? We have to get out of, and I, again, I think even our generation, a lot of times we were just told just to go vote, just the same way we were told to go to school, get a good job that, you know, right. we were told to oh, just go vote. Right. But there's power, like really getting them to understand now the power that you have at 18, 19, 20 that will impact your life when you are 40 and 50 right. and older. 
So Definitely. understand the power that you have now, right? And not just in your vote, but in shifting and recreating a system that best serves the greater good. Yeah. Yeah. And for young people, I believe it's vi- the the vote gives you, most people say your vote gives you a, a voice, mm-hmm. but I think that we all have a voice yeah. and we you, we already have voices, but some of our voices don't have enough volume. Mm. And I think that your vote is what gives your voice the volume. So you protesting the young, uh, younger generation, just like in this civil rights movement, we're doing the protest, the freedom rides. Mm-hmm. They were doing all of that because they had the energy to do it. Basically, <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's be real. They had the energy, but mm-hmm. the vote is what magnifies that mm-hmm. voice. Mm-hmm. So I don't think any of us, our voiceless. Mm-hmm. I just think that we don't have a loud enough microphone at yeah. times for our voice to be heard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And voting is what turns on that microphone. Yeah. Um, how much we vote and how knowledgeable of our vote is the amplification for that microphone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we aren't just talking into a mic, just talking to be talking. Yeah. But that vote gives us, it amplifies our voice. Mm-hmm. And if we want our voices to be heard, yeah. we've got to use a microphone loud enough mm-hmm. and our vote is what gives us that microphone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. All right. So last thing. Here we are 2020, right? 2020. What do you, how do you, how can I turn it? <laughs> We've seen across the country, they have been, I don't know the exact numbers, but okay. they are millions, maybe even billions of people who have already early voted. Oh, yeah. This year for a number of reasons. COVID, mm-hmm. just we talked about the voter suppression, mm-hmm. not trusting how the system is going to work. So many people have already early voted. Like even me, I'll take for me. This this is the first. No, I voted uh, early in two thousand eight, mm-hmm. but that was the first time. This is my second time actually early voting, and I early voted. I mean, really got it out the way this yeah. year. I didn't want no kind of questions right, of whether right. what I did, what I did. Um, but what do you think? I don't want to say what do you think the your prediction of the twenty twenty election is going to be, but what do you? How do you think this? 2020 election is going to change the course of vote of voting and voter turnout mm. for I'll say for the rest of our lives because mm. I think that this is I don't think we really understand how much this electoral season means mm-hmm. just with the whoever is elected president mm-hmm. and how they're going to appoint the Supreme Court justices mm-hmm. who can stay on a Supreme Court just until they die. Yeah. That's a that's a long time for some yeah. people. Mm-hmm. It's not just a term. Just other things that are affecting this vote. The census, we talked about yeah. that. Mm-hmm. How that's being affected by this. Just what do you think, how do you think this year's election season is going to um, set us up for the rest of our, mm-hmm. like at least the next decade. Yeah. We'll, we'll go that far. <laughs> that's a good question. Um, it is my hope that one or two things are going to happen. Mm-hmm. Either people will be encouraged okay. by the numbers, mm-hmm. okay, encouraged by the fact that, oh, my, vo- my vote does in fact matter, right, because they went and voted early. Right. They made sure they got their absentee mm-hmm. ballot, ballot in. They made sure they, right, they did their part, and they can see, my prayer is that they can see that it works, right, right? Mm-hmm. That that the system is not totally broken right. and that we still have a little something to work with. Yeah. The other thing is that should the worst happen, yeah. <laughs> that people say are still inspired right. somehow to say, oh, no, 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 no. This can't happen again right. on my watch. Right. And that people will begin to understand the severity yeah. that is involved and the, the, the weight uh-huh. that comes with the decisions we make whether we're writing in some Donald Duck, right? right. Uh, like I've, I've heard stories of people just doing this ridiculous stuff. Right. And it's like, so one way or another, it's my hope that whatever the outcome is, that mm-hmm. people, that especially young people, again, come to recognize their role and their responsibility yeah. at, the, at the local level on up to the national level right. and everywhere in between, right? Totally. Totally. And I really hope, and I even hope, shoot, I've been seeing more more of my friends, who, young children, like yeah. in middle school and even some in elementary school who are like running for the school president and right. like class president <laughs> and really get it, kind of getting an idea. Even now they're watching, they are watching yeah, us. Yeah, that's true. That's good. And so even, even if we can learn how to better respond, mm-hmm. because I know even since 2016, my own individual, again, my own love walk has been challenged right. in new ways oh, yeah. as a believer. 
right? Uh, as a, as a follower of Christ. And then I've had to really take a look at how ignorant I was yeah, to the service. whole process yeah. yep, totally. Likewise. and how lazy I've been. Likewise. And so whatever the outcome, it is my prayer that people recognize, like really come to recognize yeah. the power that we have mm -hmm. and the power that we may or may not be using yeah. as individuals. No, no, that's, that's good. I, I, going along with that. That's kind of my thing too, is even if whoever you vote for, doesn't win. Mm -hmm. I pray that the the effort that's been put in to learn policies and yes. learn where they stand, it'll spill over into uh, continuing our civic duty yes. on a local level and on the other level so that we're more knowledgeable mm -hmm. and even just becoming more knowledgeable, but even after whoever wins, we hold them accountable yes. and we have, um, we have real substance mm -hmm to bring to the table mm -hmm. of why we are displeased with what they're doing yeah. instead of I'm just going along with what I saw on social media and I'm mm -hmm. reposting. Mm -hmm. um, people are, like we talk about, people are voting early because it's important. Yeah. People are talking about voting because it's early. Uh, I just, just re remember the stat. It was 35 million people, I believe, yeah. have already registered, have already voted early yeah. when our last presidential election at this moment only five million people yeah. had to yep. vote. So that's just uh, that just goes to show how important people mm -hmm. really think that this that this is, um, and just using their voice to vote, not just voting, casting their ballot, yeah. but after that moment is done, yeah. holding these elected officials accountable and continuing to learn about mm -hmm. the electoral process and what mm -hmm. our duty is civically, mm -hmm. um, just to stay engaged yeah. and not just. Cast it and that be it. Yeah. So I know we could have talked about so many, so many things tonight. Yeah. Um, that would have probably taken like an hour each. The voter suppression, the history of voting, mm -hmm. um, when certain people were allowed to vote. We touched on a lot of, on some of those things, mm -hmm. but we didn't want to keep everybody too long. But hopefully what we've done tonight is we've just sparked something in people, yeah. something that we've said people are going to go back and, uh, and research mm -hmm. and look up and start finding out information about. So um, just give me one last last encouragement, one last statement that we can give mm -hmm. to the people um, regarding voting, and then I'll give my last one, and we'll get out of here. Yes. Um, well, it is – well, thank you, as always, for well, having me here for, for the conversation. Sure. I honestly – these these are all – opportunities to learn yeah. for me. They always are. Even, even if I bring my own mm -hmm. limited knowledge <laughs> to the table, um, I'm always seeking ways to grow mm -hmm. in knowledge. And that is the one thing that I really hope again, everyone takes away from this talk yeah. and every tiny talk that it just offers a new perspective yeah. that it, it challenges us to really look, take up, take a step back and say, mm -hmm. uh, and find how am I supposed to impact my world? And then really, again, I really wanted to start putting forth a conscious effort to determine what America, what it is that my, my city, how do I Im imagine uh, uh, my city and my mm. state and this country working for me? Yeah. How do I, and what is it that you want? What is it that, you know, do you, from certain intersections where you see crosswalks they where you know the city could be planned a little better on right. up to whoever's find your place find your voice and then do the work yeah it doesn't have to be this big grand thing it's the simplest of responsibilities that we have yeah. and it, you don't have to go no one's asking you to go and run for for office mm -hmm. yourself but everyone has a part to play yeah and so I'm, I'm, I know I am personally done, done complaining about all the things that are not happening. Yeah. If I don't even really know right. what I want to have happen, That's good. Yeah. it's a representation of who I am and who my family is really in this good. city, in this country, and in the world. That's really Find good. your place and show up. Find your place and show up. That's gonna that leads into my my thing. My encouragement would be all of it matters. All of it. It all, it all, it all matters. There aren't big issues or big times to vote and little times to vote. It all matters, um, and it all has an it has an effect mm -hmm. on us. Um, like you said, we can complain, yeah. we can do so much bickering and showing our disappointment. However, we do that. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that we can have that we do have in our favor is our power and our ability to vote. Mm -hmm. 
voting changes so many things. Okay. Not just the president, but it changes so many things in our city, mm -hmm. in our states. Um, so we challenge you um, to go out and vote. Yeah. So just like we started tonight, we'll end with the same question. Are you voting? We'll see you next time. Tiny Talks.